What's up, Cybernics, and welcome back to a new quick win. Today, we're talking once again about image cropping. I think this is the third time I'm doing a tutorial about image crop because the API of the packages we used in the past always kept changing. Today, we're using the Angular wrapper around the popular Cropper.js package to build a cool cropping functionality for our Ionic Angular application and we're gonna also combine it with capacitor. So we will be able to capture our own images and use them as the import for the cropper element. We're gonna be able to flip them, rotate them, uh, crop them, of course, and then get the resulting image. If you wanna check out the quick win, link below the video for all Ionic Academy members. And if you're not yet a member of the Ionic Academy, go check it out right now. Ionicacademy.com, my place to help you with everything Ionic. But now, let's dive into this and build a cool cropper component. Alright, let's get started with our application by setting up a blank new Ionic application using Ionic Angular. Then we can dive into our project and we need to install a few packages. So first of all, we're going to install ngx image cropper. This is the package that's basically giving us the whole functionality. It is a wrapper around the very popular cropper JS package. As far as I know, <laughs> I don't think this package implements all the core functionality. Um, and it is updated for Angular 13, which we're using in this video. Additionally, I installed Hammer.js. So I usually don't really like Hammer.js, um, but for the pinch or the, yeah, the pinch to resize gesture on a mobile device, we actually need Hammer.js. And just importing it from the uh, Angular browser module kinda didn't work. There were some open issues on the package. Probably there's a fix in the future, but at the time writing, we also need to install this. Unless if you want to only use the image cropper on the browser, then you don't need this. Um, but if you want to build a mobile application with Ionic from it, then you certainly need to install it. Also, we're going to install the capacitor camera because that will make our life easier capturing image. In the documentation for cropper, it is just using uh, a standard input with a type file. So that works for testing as well. Probably we're going to try this out as well. But for uh, usually for mobile apps, uh, the behavior with the camera is better. Finally, go ahead and add the native platforms or run the first uh, Ionic build before this because we need to make two or three little changes. Since we're using the camera on iOS and Android, we need to specify some permissions. And then uh, on iOS, it's inside iOS app app info plist and there we need these three blocks the ns camera usage description the ns photo library at usage description and the ns photo library usage description didn't i say this already hmm. okay these are the three keys make sure you use reasonable strings otherwise apple might reject your application additionally we need to go to android app source main android manifest and scroll to the bottom where we already have the internet permission and simply put in two more permissions for read external storage and write external storage. This is required by Capacitor. If you check out the Capacitor plugin, you will also see exactly these descriptions listed in here. Great. Now that we got all of this in place, uh, there's only one more thing, and that is to go to our main TS and add the Hammer.js import. We installed it, so this is enough to make it work. Actually, can I, let's see, uh, I'm going to remove it, and then we're going to check out my live reload. So I'm running Ionic Surf already, or probably even some kind of live reload, I actually don't know. Uh, but yeah, we're not even using a uh, hammer package yet. So uh, where's my main file once again? Let's just edit and then we're fine. Otherwise, if you don't do this, you will later see a warning here inside your console that you didn't add hammer. Now in the page where you want to use the cropper module, we're going to import it. So let's go in our case to the home module TS and add the image cropper module. And this one goes right to the imports. There we go. So once we got this, uh, do I get a warning? No, no, I'm not yet using it. Um, we're going to work on those three files. Probably I'm going to put this to the side so we can directly see our changes. That might be cool. 
uh, and I'm gonna just for testing bring in the stuff that's here in this file. So I'm gonna add this so we can quickly see what's going on. Uh, they also got all these things already, which is pretty nice. Uh, only thing is that TypeScript will complain if I put this after the constructor. And then uh, this is the import. Let's put it here. And then our application should actually already work. Now I can also maybe show you the difference if I comment out the hammer.js part. Yes, ngx macro could not find hammer.js, pinch gesture won't work. So make sure you got hammer installed if you want to use this on a mobile device. Now let's pick a file. I'm going to use this one here. And then we already see the usual cropper.js view. Up here, we can edit our image. We can uh, use these uh, yeah, boxes to change the image and we automatically see the updated picture. Why do we see this? Well, image cropper has uh, by default defined a lot of functions here like image cropped, uh, the format, the aspect ratio, th four to three. I could also change this to I think one one or is it just one? I actually don't know exactly. Um, yeah, this should be a box now. So a real, uh, actually not completely sure. <laughs> anyway, um, and we got different functionalities like the image was cropped. In that case, our function will set the cropped, the new cropped image to the result. And this down here simply displays the cropped image. As we can see, I can change this here. So usually I don't think people would use it like this. Usually you do the crop and then you hit a button and then it will show the cropped image. Um, of course it's possible like this, but we're gonna do my version where we do like a little transformation. We're gonna add a few more buttons and on click we will then perform the crop action. So since we know that it generally works like this, uh, we're ready to remove everything again. <laughs> Um, now actually let's keep a bit of this in here. Uh, that might probably make sense. Also, we could probably already take a look at the CSS because there are two variables that we can use for the image cropper. One is the cropper outline color, which is basically the color you see here around the cropping area. So let's override it and let's pick a file. And then we see, uh, we don't see anything yet. Um, the color looks pretty much the same, didn't? Uh, let me try. Let me try something more obvious. Let's remove this and set this to red. Uh, then we should be able to see this. There we go. Oops, that was certainly not my intention. Um, I feel like, yeah, I feel like we didn't apply it correctly. Yeah, uh, usually it's good if you make your uh, CSS selector really work. Otherwise, it's just horrible and. <laughs> Uh, now we got to see it. So this would also look kind of interesting, but I think this is a bit better. You can use the default or my version now would be a slightly darker background uh, on these other spots. Additionally, there's also a background for the cropper, which it can be styled with cropper overlay color. Now let me show you that area first of all. This is right here. So it shows already up by default. We could prevent this by hiding the cropper with an ngif, but it's also kind of visible right here. And if you want to change this, as you've seen, I would recommend you just pick your eye on background color or the color uh, of your view, because in that case, it will just be white. Uh, you won't see anything. Good. Now that we got this covered, uh, let's implement our own cropper version. Um, so for this, we actually need first of all a button to select an image. So let's put in a new function, select image. And do we want to get rid of this for simplicity? Probably might make things a bit easier uh, later. So I'm going to make this clean and then um, I will definitely remove this and I'm going to well, I'm just gonna command it out for now. Okay, let's add a button to select our image. And if we don't have an image, uh, we will display that button because otherwise we're gonna show some controls. So if we have an image, we're gonna display an ion row with some uh, controls. Uh, my image. 
that will be later. Uh, my image should be set to null in the beginning. Uh, we're gonna do it like this. And then within select image, we can just use the capacitor camera, pretty much the default implementation. So let's bring this in and let's import the camera from capacitor camera and also make this an asynchronous function. Cool. Uh, you can get different results from the capacitor camera. You can get a URI, you can uh, get base64. I will just go ahead with base64. Um, that's gonna be perfectly fine for our case. Once we got the image that the user captured, we can set this to our cropper. And I noticed that this actually takes uh, a few seconds sometimes on a device, probably because we're using base64. So maybe uh, a different usage would be recommended. You can just try this out. Um, because with cropper, you have multiple ways. Uh, in the default documentation, it is using the image changed event. So the image changed event is triggered when they pick a file from the file input, which would trigger the file change event. So this is the first one. This is a file event. You could also specify a blob file as image file or an image base64 string or the image URL. So you get a lot of different uh, options. If you notice bad performance with base64, probably give one of these a try. Uh, maybe image URL could be more complicated, probably. Um, maybe it's worth it. Anyway, um, in our case, uh, and probably in general, it might make sense to have a little loading in place until the image is actually finished loading. So we're gonna go one by one through the different uh, steps. Um, additionally, as a backup, I'm also gonna add a function if the image load failed. And now we can go back here and probably when I guess just do it uh, only the things that we want to. So uh, let's remove everything that looks red. Image loaded will trigger image loaded. Loaded image failed will our fail. We set the format to PNG. This is the output in the end. Could be something else as well. The aspect ratio fine for us as well. And maintain aspect ratio true. Well, that won't hurt as well. Down here, we have the cropped image. Let's make sure this only displays if we actually have a cropped image. Um, and then I think we are pretty good already. Now we, of course, need a way to pass our image to the cropper. I'm also gonna give it a template uh, reference. So I'm gonna call this one cropper. And then I'm gonna use something with base64. Yeah, I uh, set this to my image. Cool. So now if we set my image, image cropper will automatically load that value. Uh, that means we just need to set this. So this dot my image is equal. And now we need to change the base64 string slightly. So we add the data attribute here in the beginning. And once we do this, we will also set my cropped image to null back again, because that will prevent that we still see a preview uh, in our case here. So let's give this a try. Select image, we select one, and it pretty much works exactly like before. But as we can see, we have now used the capacitor camera. And on a device, we could now easily capture an image. In fact, can I do this? Is my application running? Uh, is there some kind of connection? No, why, why should you maintain that connection really? Like after a hundred videos, you still don't know how to do this. Cool, Simon. Uh, there we go, B biggest preview on earth is here. Let's select an image, let's take a picture. Yes, this is my screen, I'm gonna use that photo. It loads and then I can do the same fun that we had before. Now, actually on a mobile device, I don't really like these squares here because, well, I don't think we need them. And there's actually a way to disable them. For this, we're gonna check if we're running on a mobile device. Uh, we can do this pretty easily with a capacitor core package and get platform. And if the platform is equal to web, uh, probably if it's unequal to web, we're running on a mobile device. And now with that value, we can go to cropper and the Property is called something with square, square. Yeah, height resize squares. That's it. Height resize squares uh, if our application is running on a mobile device. 
So as a result, I could now take another picture, snap this, use that photo, and we see no more squares on our picture. And on the web version, we would still have them because this is not mobile. So I think on the web, these kind of things actually make sense. Cool. Uh, what can we do next? Mm, we can probably add a button so we can actually crop our image. So let's put a button up to the top bar. I'm gonna, just gonna use the ion buttons with an ion button. If we have an image set, uh, we're gonna show this button, which will trigger the crop image function. Crop image will be pretty easy, but to actually trigger this, we first of all need a way to access the cropper directly. And we can do this with a view child. So we already gave it the template reference cropper in here. And that means we can now easily access it in our page by using add view child, the template reference name, and it is of the type image cropper component. And if you check this out, you should see the nice uh, documentation of basically everything that we can use. And now cropping the image becomes pretty easy. We just call this dot cropper crop. And then I'm also gonna set my image to null so it disappears from the screen and we later only see the cropped image. Now, what's interesting is uh, at this point, we actually, I think at least, how do we get back an event here? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh-huh, interesting. Uh, we could probably use that. We could probably use that. So let's give this a try. This dot cropped image should be our result. And we want the base64 string in here. Hmm, let's give this a try. Could be cool. Uh, so we go with the image. We try to apply some kind of transformation and then we crop. Oh. This works, cool. <laughs> uh, so previously I used also uh, another event because cropper has an event for image cropped that we could use. So we could just call crop in here and inside the cropped uh, event that we could catch, we could then set it to our base64 string. But this is actually even a lot easier. So we saved one more function and a line of HTML. Let's drink a sip of coffee. Ooh. Ah, it's today with a bit of bit of chocolate taste. Uh, really delicious if you enjoy coffee. Otherwise, enjoy your tea. Okay, uh, let's do a bit more, and that is some kind of transformation, because right now we can really just crop it, um, but there's more that we can do. For this, I'm gonna add a few, uh, a few rows. Actually, we already got the row set up. It's just not displaying anything. So we're gonna implement functionality to rotate the image, flip it horizontal or vertical and discard the changes. And I'm just gonna bring them, will I bring them in? Mm, uh, mm, no, nah, not today. Let's do it like this. So we got some time. Uh, let's do the rotate and let's do the flip horizontal and the flip vertical. And then we're gonna take a look at how we can do this basically in the, in the easiest kind of way. Actually, we can dis, uh, implement the discard changes already um, because to discard the changes, the only thing that we need to do is set the input, which is in our case, my image to null. At the same time, I'm gonna set the cropped image to null as well, just to make sure we don't see anything. Um, but this is pretty much the way to reset cropper. Um, if you're using a different input, if you're not using base64, if you're using the file change event or anything, it will still work the same. So just hit discard, set your input to null, and then the cropping session ends. But how can we actually do this? To do this, uh, let's take a look at the image cropper component. And there should be a transform property right here, which expects uh, an object of this type. So we're gonna create this object and update it if we wanna do any kind of transformation. So let's do this, let's create a transform object here, uh, image transform type, and we're gonna just set it to an empty object in the beginning. Then we will go back to our HTML and for the cropper somewhere just add transform 
please use our transform object. And now we don't even need to call a specific functionality on cropper, which in fact didn't really work for me as well, but we only need to update our transform object. So for example, to rotate something, uh, we're gonna use the current value of rotate, which is in the beginning actually undefined since we set this up as an empty object. So I'm gonna use nullish coalescing, uh, which will give us either this value or the fallback value right here. So in a, if we trigger this the first time, this expression basically becomes zero and afterwards it will become the value. That means we got zero plus 90 is 90, modulo 360 is still 90. So we're gonna rotate 90, 180, 270 and that's it. And to apply this, we're gonna reset our transform object in a, a good kind of way because we're gonna keep all the properties it already has because we don't wanna overwrite them. And then we're gonna write rotate to the new value. And this is pretty much the way we can do it for uh, flip as well. In those cases, uh, we will also keep them and we wanna overwrite flip horizontal by doing this dot transform flip horizontal. So we just invert that value. Same here, this time it's just flip vertical. And don't forget to do it in here as well. And with that in place, we can once again select an image and let's give this a try. We can rotate it as much as we want. And at the same time, I can rotate it and then flip it and flip, oh, this is now melting my brain. Oh, this is crazy. Uh, okay, and I can still do this, and then I can capture it, and I got exactly what I wanted to get from that image. Very nice. Uh, if you don't trust me, you can run this on your favorite device as well. Um, I gave this a try on Android as well, so it definitely did work on every possible platform. I think the performance is also pretty nice. Um, and of course, we're just doing some basic stuff in here. If you check out the cropper documentation, you will notice that, yeah, we got the outputs, uh, the methods actually kind of limited, uh, CSS variables, we touched balls of them, but here are all these properties. Uh, all these inputs can be used to build an even more powerful cropper. In the beginning, you have the different ways to pass a file or an image to the cropper. Uh, then you have a lot about the format and the aspect ratios, the width and the height that you could set. Um, so probably you could also do a lot of this um, with, uh, yeah, with buttons. Uh, you can control all of this with buttons. You could even access the cropper. Um, align image auto crop. I think, did we disable auto crop? Uh, actually, I think hmm. uh, we didn't even implement the function to catch the crop event. So probably right now, um, yeah, we should definitely set auto crop to false if we want to use our button. Otherwise it will always do the cropping in the background, uh, which might lead to performance decrease over time. Um, but anyway, there's a lot you can check out and I recommend you take a look at the documentation, but otherwise the component works pretty flawless. All right, and that's it once again for today's quick win. I hope you enjoyed this. I think it is very helpful in a lot of applications where the user is capturing images and you just need to crop and transform the result a bit. Again, if you want to use this on a mobile device, make sure you install Hammer.js. If you only want to use this on the web, you probably don't need this because you don't need those touch events. If you enjoyed this video, please also hit the like button and stay subscribed for more Ionic and web-related tutorials coming in the future every week as you know. So, have a great week and I will catch you next Tuesday like always. Until then, happy coding, Simon. <laughs>